Welcome to the One Life, One Chance podcast. I'm your host, Toby Morris. Today, I don't come from my, my kitchen. I'm actually in Crossroads. Thank you, Crossroads. Let me have a little station here. And I am about to interview someone who I'm honored to call my friend, somebody who was a big inspiration to me growing up, um, a legend, a hero, and just a nice, nice human being. So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show, Christian Asoy. Yeah, what's up, Toby? It's good to be here, especially... Uh L.A., old stomping grounds um, in your like domain, kind of like the vegan restaurant. I love Crossroads. Every <laughs> yes. time I come up here, we come here. My wife's a vegan. And yeah. so it's pretty cool how we have that kind of like cool relationship. Yeah. But uh, good, by good food. food's good food. Yes. You know, and I, I don't judge anybody. I don't judge anything. And I don't judge food. And food tastes good. You eat it. It must be good. <laughs> and, and, you're, and, you're, and you're a very open-minded, we're going to get to that, but you're a very open-minded person as far as like trying vegan food and checking stuff out and being, being healthy. Oh, I eat anything though. See, yeah. I go around the world and I just try everything. Yeah. And so for me, this is kind of like in that same, you know, um, ex- experience or, or adventure. You know what I mean? I've always been that way when I was young. I tried, yeah. you know, exotic foods. I traveled the world young. And so for me... Vegan is just another exotic food. Exactly. You know what I mean? So the way I look at it, it's like, why not? Let's let's see how uh, how it you know. But it's cool because most people don't like taste. that. Some meat eaters don't like that. Like, oh, vegan food is weird. But I think it's cool that you're very open minded to it. Well, they you know, people that uh, aren't open minded can't ex- explore. True. You know. So hey, the little world shut off. Nice everything. to know you. <laughs> I'm not just kidding. <laughs> All right, so I'm, I'm gonna. I have so many questions for you. I want to start with the beginning with you, though. You were born in California. Uh huh. Born in Los Angeles, downtown LA, Wilshire Boulevard. And I know your dad pops the soy. He's amazing. Um, so, what was growing up like with pops the soy? What was growing up like with your mom and do you have brothers and sisters? No, I'm the only child. Okay. So I was born in 1967, October 5th, right here, and. Uh, my mom was a secretary, Beverly Hills. My dad was a artist going to art school. They both grew up in Hawaii. They met and came to L.A. and got married in Vegas in, I uh, think, 61. Okay. And planted their roots right here because of the art art scene. And yeah. And what my father wanted to do was go to art school. Yeah. So he went to, like, Chenard and and... Ended up going to Berkeley for college, okay. you know, and graduated with his master's degree in fine art, getting like the chancellor's award, you know, That's awesome. and stuff like that. So I was in the 60s in the riots up in San Francisco, like Berkeley area That's when crazy. they were turning over cars in a baby, you know, carriage or you wow. know, stroller at the time. I don't know if they called them strollers. Then. Yeah. But uh I was part of all that, and they were like, you know, this is a little dangerous to have the baby. We're going to go back to L.A. <laughs> and so, you know, they moved back to L.A., and I grew up in L.A. My pretty much my entire life. life. So so how were, you, how were you in like in school? Did you like school? Did you do good in school? Did you play sports? Well, I went to a place called Play Mountain Place right off of La Cienega in Washington Boulevard, and it was in the alley right there, and it was kind of like your... Um, artists, private school, and I was going to school with people like Donovan Leach, um, Ioni Sky, uh, wow. Max Perlick. Um, there, there's a few other people that yeah. aren't celebrities, yeah. but they're artists or they're chefs. They're people that I've known and that are still around LA scene. Yeah. And uh, so it was kind of like that was from th- three years old all the way to like 11. Kay. And then I went to area d which was kind of like your surfer alternative school that was off of arlington and washington or rodeo that moved to hamilton high school so seventh grade i was at hammy going to this uh school called they ended up calling it west side alternative school okay and all the venice kids went there so it was me and a bunch of venice heads that were in school and we would always, because we were the stoner crew, we were like the kids <laughs> with the ha- hats backwards, long hair, town and country shorts, van shoes, skateboards in the locker. What year was that? What year was that? This is, um, let's see, 1980, 81, like not, 1980. 
And the school, Hamilton High, but for people listening, that's the school my son goes to now. Um, it sounds like a Fast Time at Ridgemont High movie, actually, what you're describing. Oh, yeah. And, you know, d- you said, dude, I like school. Yeah. I kind of like love the challenge for us because we were the most unusual suspects to actually like do the, good in school. Yeah, the outcast. Yeah, that we would challenge each other to see who would do the best on the test. Wow. And I remember this one time, the smartest girl in the class, you know, that was <laughs> like, I think it was a Plains Indians class or something like that. And I have a good memory. Yeah. So I memorized all the states, all the things, all the definitions of the tribes and all these things. And I sat next to her and I just remember her <clears throat> looking on my paper to cheat. And, <laughs> and I'm sitting there just blasting through it because I had a photographic memory at the time. Yeah. And I was just blasting through it and she's looking and then the teacher caught her. Oh, wow. And I was like, dude, that's <laughs> sick. Everybody in the class was like, ooh, she was cheating off of that guy. <laughs> Christian? Dude, that's amazing. <laughs> Skateboarder? Stoner? No way. And uh, it was like my highlight smart moment so wh- in <laughs> junior high, so, eighth grade. So what got you into skating? Like, when did you get into skating? How old were you? I was young. I was like nine years old and wow. uh, eight actually going to Torrance Skateboard World. And we looked at it in the magazines. Me and my friend Aaron Murray, we kind of grew up together since we were babies. And we were my our fathers went to art school together. So yeah. we kind of like did everything together. And skateboarding was one of those things where, you know, when the urethane wheel came out, we had skateboards even before then. OK, but. When that came out, it was like all the kids in the neighborhood were making their homeschool boards, stoker trucks, cutting out plywood boards, making them look like surfboards with a big wheel in the back, small. Wow. You know, it was kind of like Hot Roddy, you know. Super how DIY hot, too. Super like new. Yeah. And when the urethane wheel came out, that's when everything changed Okay. for us because you could ride anywhere. It was clay wheels before that and it was limited yeah but when that came out it changed the game and i just remember you know oj2s came out and uh road rider fours and my friend who was like one of the coolest kids in school at playmount place yeah i was like nine and he comes to school with these ball bearings that were sealed oh wow they were like precision sealed ball bearings all quiet in road riders and we're like <laughs> no way and then the jay adams fiber flex board oh, yeah. i saw that and i was like dang skateboarding's you know really evolving and then we looked at the magazines and sure yeah. enough we're like we're going to torrance because that was the only park open okay and for us to go to immediately like there was other skate parks but we weren't going to those yet like skatopia yeah. and the runway we went to torrance skateboard world and I just remember Marina Del Rey was about to open, 1978. Wow. Uh, October. And we're like, Marina Del Rey, right by Venice. It's where yeah. we used to go to art studios all the time and art openings. And I basically was down there all the time yeah. for my father's you know, passion and his, yeah. his uh, schooling and then his career, really, yeah. of being an artist. And then... Uh, we go down there and we see it being built because we went down there before it was going to open two yeah. weeks and we peek our heads through the fence and there was like Tony Alva, Jay Damn. Adams, guys that I saw in the, the magazines, magazines and yeah. I recognized them and there was like a little crack in the fence and I just remember sneaking in, walking right up to the dog bowl because it was right in the front yeah. of, the, of the building where the park starts. And I was just like in awe. It was like heaven came down to earth and yeah. I was on this like amazing like like it, it was a fantasy for yeah. a little kid at basically yeah. nine, ten years old. I was turning ten at the time and I think turning almost eleven actually. And because I was born in 67. So it was like I was almost eleven. Mm-hmm. And I just remember going to opening day, seeing all those guys and wanting to go pretty much every day. And were you, were you doing tricks at that time? Or just like a street no, skater? I was riding the little bowls. Me and my yeah. kid friends were riding the curbs. And we were yeah. really just little grommets, not even yeah. doing anything. But we're learning little ollies to disaster in the puppy bowl. And then we're going wow. to the, the rust bowls. They were like the brown bowls. And it was just five and a half feet deep kind of steep. So you could actually do airs and yeah. stuff, rounded lip. You could grind a little bit. 
but we just started to own those bowls. And I just remember my dad going, this is costing a little bit too much. Oh, wow. You want to go every weekend. Now you want to go during the week. And it's like five bucks every two hours or something like Back that. Then, that's a lot of and money. we want to go all day. He's like, no, this ain't working. And he's like, you know what? I'm going to see if I could uh, get a job managing this place because he saw that it wasn't managed well. And the guy goes, yeah, you want to manage it? Next thing you know, (laughs) Marina became my backyard. We were opening and closing it. I was cleaning out the bowls. I was running the shops. It was. That's amazing. It was like such a. a, 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 So cool. Yeah, I did that. Crazy situation for an 11 year old kid. Yeah. And all that access to now all that. the guys like Tony Alva, Jay Adams became my big brothers because okay. they're peers, like your yeah. dad managed the park. Yeah. Now they're down and now I'm the cool kid looking out for you. Yeah. And then I ended up skating pretty good. They were like, whoa, you can skate pretty good. And then I just hung out with them in the Rust Bowls because that was kind of like a spot. Yeah. A and th- I just started doing every trick that was in the mag in the Rust Bowl. Damn. And I remember I couldn't even skate the big bowls yet. And a photographer came down, and he's like, Ted Terrebone. And he's like, I want to shoot some photos of the kid. And I was like, oh, cool. And I did this frontside ollie for him. And then, boom, Skateboarder Magazine. I got a full page. Wow. Color photo. And it was, like, mind-boggling. I can imagine. Right then, Adam Jay Adams was taking me to Z-Flex to get fully set up. I was riding a George Wilson board in the shot. All and what grade were you in then? Eighth grade? No, no, I was 11. Okay. I think I was 11 at the time. Okay. Not even, wow, I was like, like probably s- going into seventh grade that wow, year. Wow, that's super young. And so then the next year was 1980, and I'd say within like six months to a year, I went from skating the little bowls to the big bowls yeah. and entering my first contest, and I... I got first place down at Del Mar, and then pretty much the Gold Cup series happened, and that's when Stacy Peralta approached me and goes, "Hey, you want to ride for uh, Paul Peralta Bones Brigade?" And how I got hooked up with that was with uh, Ray Bones Rodriguez. Okay. So Ray Bones, me and him were kind of hanging out a little bit, and he's like, "I'm gonna get you on Bones Brigade, bro." You know? Yeah. <laughs> Who was you're on Bones brother, Brigade? You're my you're my dude, you know what I mean? Who was on power then at that point? It was uh, Alan Gelfin, um, Mike McGill, oh, yeah. Steve Caballero, Ray Bones Rodriguez. Then there's an amateur team, Teddy Bennett, um, David Z. Um, Scott Foss was just kind of like mingling in there. Yeah. He was, you know, when when the Gold Cup came in, it's kind of like a change of guard. It went from then to, to the new guys. Okay. But... Um, I was on the team, and then Marina Del Rey Gold Cup came up probably within six months from its opening. Yeah, when I started skating, actually, vert. Yeah, like literally, it happened so quickly. Not even a year. That's crazy. And all I wanted to do was high airs back then, so I was doing some of the highest airs, and I was only twelve. Damn. And so it's crazy. Here came the Marina. You know, I think the first one was at Oasis. I got twenty eighth place. I just remember going there so nervous. Going up against all the top amateurs, yeah. no age group, you know, Damn. and I just remember going in, I'm going to blast the biggest air and I locked up and slammed and I still got like a dent in my elbow from it. Wow. It's the only thing I've got a dent from in my elbows is from that slam. Wow. And I just remember getting 28th place and going, wow, what a, what a first impression. And then it was gold cup. Um, I think it was a uh, big O. Orange County Capsule Bowl, I got ninth. Okay. And then um, Colton, I got seventh, I believe. And then Marina Del Rey Skate Park, I won and got first place. Is this a matter of like within like a year or two? Within basically months, not even a year. Wow. So it's pretty fast paced, you know, how it evolved back then. Yeah. And uh, what do you think it was? Like why you connected to it so much skateboarding? Well, it's all I wanted to do. It's all I wanted to be. It's kind of like um, I wanted to be Bruce Lee before I ever was a skateboarder. I wanted okay. to be a a master at something and be the best in the world. I saw Bruce Lee as my idol and it was like, I'm going to be him. Yeah. I want to like do what he does. Yeah. And if he's going to, you know, be the best in the world and by a long shot and make fun of people, have fun, be an actor, yeah. you know, 
almost like, you know, uh, be a celebrity ish. Yeah. You know, I mean, all that. I'm growing up in L.A. too. So it totally. was normal to think like this. Yeah. You know, but I just remember going to Chinatown. I'm part Chinese. I'm Japanese. Yeah. I'm Hawaiian. I'm European. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, and for me, I was like, it could be anything you want to be because I saw that he could do it. It's awesome. And then when skateboarding came into my life at say eight nine and it started evolving i was like i'm gonna be bruce lee on a skateboard yeah and that became my passion you know it wasn't like i put martial arts on the back burner because i was doing martial arts i was taking wing chewing classes yeah and and my dad was doing that but i was like no i think i'm gonna like stick with this well you know surfing was a big inspiration too. Yeah. And then when Jay Adams came into my life and those guys were surfers and skaters. Yeah. And then the music scene, let's just not leave out the music. It was like, first it's Led Zeppelin and, you know, UFO and and Aerosmith and the, uh, like Rolling Stones. And and we were listening to reggae. I mean, I was already listening to Bob Marley when I was seven. I saw Bob Marley when I was seven. I seen him twice. And that, so reggae wow. was a huge part of my growing up, you know, listening to Peter, uh, Peter Tosh Natasha. and Jimmy Cliff and, you know, Gregory Isaacs before I was even a real bona fide skateboarder. Yeah. And so for me, you know, with the Rolling Stones and all those things and, and, and the Beatles and all that going on and then obviously throw in a little Elvis Presley and all his movies. Yeah. I was like. I'm going to throw all this in one big pot and I'm going to like do something with this because my dad always said, you know, just be original. Don't be a follower. You know, don't try to copy people, be your own self. And I just remember hearing that over and over and going, okay, I'm going to try and do my own thing because I didn't want to be a copycat. I didn't want to bite. You know what I mean? I didn't want to be a a poser where, you know, you're just following the trend. And so I always did my own thing and, when that whole thing kind of exploded, it was like, man, skateboarding is going to be my life. Yeah, and I remember you, committing yeah. to that, just going, no, I'm going to be the best. It's like a, a switch went off. Yeah. Once, I believe it was when I went to the back keyhole and I learned how to do all my tricks in the deep bowl. Okay. It was like in one day I learned backside airs, foot and a half out, you know, front side airs, a yeah. foot out, invert hand on coping all in one day. And it was like Damn. the roof lifted off of me. And I went from being a little kid to a man yeah. in one day. And that's pretty much when I thought possibilities are now, you know, possible where the impossibilities were were, were kind of like, you know, in front of me, kind of yeah. holding me back to where that blew off the roof. Yeah. And it became everything to me. And that's when I just went full pedal to the metal skateboarding is going to be it i didn't even stop and i haven't i still haven't, haven't looked stopped. back yeah you so know you, you life gets crazy yeah and you know we go through some things but the still the heart and soul of what drove me to want to do what i do has never stopped and you know and that's why i'm still skateboarding today since you're a kid so i know your dad's a musician too are you interested in playing music when you're younger too or yeah, I played, uh, you know, guitar and, you know, they'd be all, I mean, ever, ever since I can remember, they had jam sessions yeah. and we're going to gigs and art openings. And so it wasn't like something that I thought was my thing. Yeah. I thought that's older people's stuff. Yeah. You know what <laughs> I mean? Like, yeah. I'm, I'm jumping from roof to roof. Yeah. You know what I mean? We're sneaking the food under the table and yeah. we're, you know, little mischievous kids and we're going to go skate in the back and then we end up in the front when we're only, you know what I mean? Stuff yeah. like that. We were we were pushing the boundaries of what we could do and try to not get in trouble, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or, or get run over by a car. Were you a good, good kid you back know? then? Oh, I was a decent kid. I wasn't, you know, I didn't get busted for much until I got into a teenage years. Yeah. And, you know, I'm talking about, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> I didn't get busted very much when I was like 10, 11, 12. I was pretty, <laughs> pretty, <laughs> I was pretty tame back then. But <laughs> when I turned a teenager, things changed. Yeah. <laughs> but did you, did you graduate from school and stuff? No, I dropped out in probably about 10th, the end of 10th grade. You know, I was traveling too much. I was skateboard contest was 
every month I'm in a different city, yeah. state, and I needed to be there during the week. And I told my school, I was like, hey, I want to finish school. So, you know, can you send me with the work? And they're like, no, you need in-class credit. Uh -huh. And I was like, well, I, I don't think I can... Uh, 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 <laughs> Uh, cancel this contest because it's my career yeah. in my head and I remember my mom you know I wanted to finish school because I was I was decent at it yeah it wasn't hard for me to do school you were passing yeah no problem I could just ba just barely skip by with the amount of days I needed and still pass yeah and do it and if I really thought about it and studied a little yeah I'd ace it yeah but I was just so focused on my career yeah. At a young age, at twelve, I was already. So you saw you, know, you saw skateboarding as a career focus be before it was like a career for people. Like it was a professional sport now, but you're making money at a young age. Well, by the time I was fourteen, turning fifteen, I was making two grand a month. Wow. So I'm going to school, you know, in ninth grade, yeah. making more than my teachers. Yeah. And they're like telling that in the class. Oh, well, look at Christian. He's here. He's a successful kid. It's amazing, you know. And I'm like. Well, looks like I'm going to have to decide whether I'm going to be able to, you know, finish school or not. And I just remember my mom going, "You know what, Christian, you can always finish school, but you can't always do what you're going to do right now." It's awesome. Very so supportive. So you need to like go after it. She saw the potential in, yeah. you know, who I was. I wasn't winning first place at 16 years old. Mm -hmm. I was the one that was the 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 one that had the most potential. Okay. And it looked like I was about to. And then when I turned 17, true. Yeah. I started my own company. And then it was like I was the best in the world. And it was because I put in the work. Yeah. It wasn't like it just happened. It was like all I did was skateboard. All I wanted to do was skateboard. I did it every single day, all day. And, you know, I was focused on tricks, keeping yeah. up with what was going on. I was trying to be healthy. I, you know, it's funny, you know, I was hooked on cocaine at 15, you know, wow. doing, you know, mushrooms and acid at 12. How did that, how did that happen? You hanging out with? Just the culture, you know what I mean? Hanging out with people and friends at the skate park. It's just what, what goes down. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and for me, my dad was like, you know what? Don't get busted. You know, hang out, do what you do. I'm doing my thing. You know what I mean? You do your yeah. thing. You know, and I was like my own man. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think that that, that allowed me to kind of experiment, but then it got out of control. Now so I, you, I'm doing you, cocaine. Yeah. I'm hanging out with guys like Jay Adams and, and guys, and we're up all night raging. You know what I mean? And I'm pretty much going to win this contest, and I stay up <laughs> all night. I don't go to sleep. I go there. Crazy. I'm like, I could win this anyway. I go there. I get. I think it was third place, and I was like, wait a minute. That ain't mm. working for me. And ah. then I had this... Uh, you know, moment where I thought I was going to die on cocaine one, one night. And Damn. I, I was sitting here going, oh, God. You know, if there was ever a moment I was praying, I was like, God, let me wake up. Let me wake up. I don't, you know, try not to go to sleep because you don't think you're going to wake up. Yeah. And then when I woke up, I quit. And I think I was 17 at the time. Okay. And I didn't do any more cocaine or, or I always say I didn't do cocaine every day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just did it once in a while, yeah. you know, but I really did. But stop. you had the willpower to do I that. I stopped yeah. all the stuff that I was doing every day, like, you know, cocaine or, or even dabbling in, you know, opium and wow. acid and mushrooms. And I kind of focused on skateboarding. And then for the next, I think about four years, I was like what I call clean. I was sober. Because all I did was smoke weed and drink beer and alcohol and do ecstasy on the weekends. You yeah. know what I mean? That's sober. You know but what I mean? But it wasn't affecting your career at that point. Well, no, because I only did it on the weekends yeah, and yeah. I was pretty mellow. Yeah. And I went out and, you know, got a girlfriend at the time. And so I was kind of a little mellower when it came to like going out and raging. Yeah. But I was focused on skateboarding and I believe that that's what, you know, kept Sa me progressing yeah in a field that was progressing yeah you know with people that weren't having these kind of like extracurricular lifestyles yeah that i kind of had you know going to clubs at 15 years old in la Crazy. three two one at the odyssey you know what yeah. i mean off of beverly right down the street from here we were going there at like 15 you know, 14 i think it was like 14 15 it's crazy 16 man. and over they're like hey what's up I'm like yeah <laughs> i'm 16 
He's like, get in there, stupid wow. kid. You know what I mean? Like it was like one of those things where, yeah. where you know, we were breaking was you know a big deal right then. Yeah, you know, eighty one, eighty two. Yeah, and Pop and Taco and all those dudes were there, and you know, Jason Sugars. I don't know if you know Jason Sugars the name, and yeah. these guys that are local L.A. guys that that Pop locked and and did all the, the b boys, yeah, you know, b boying, but. You know, for us, it was just who we were and what we did with each other in our neighborhoods and streets. Yeah, that's and yeah. we we're keeping up with cultures that we dug. Yeah. You know, and and that's the pure form of what we see as like business today. Mm-hmm. Like everything's a business. Everybody's trying to make money off of everything. And it kind of takes the soul out of everything. Yeah, I agree. But I believe soul's coming back because people are really identifying with what they do like and what yeah. they do love. And now they're actually cherishing it, respecting it, and not exploiting it and really That's being a, a protector of it. And yeah. then becoming an ambassador of it. Yeah. Because, you know, when, when you're not, you know, yeah, that's sure. what you do with the passions you have, 100%. Toby. And yeah. for me, that's that's real. Yeah. You know, some things we agree, some things we don't. But you know yeah. what? We do respect each other 100%. and we love each other yeah. for our convictions. 100%. And that, to me, is where our culture is coming around and they're getting more educated. And the younger kids are starting to recognize what really matters. I mean, obviously... We could talk about social media, how yeah. the, the the phone has changed everything and the Internet. But, 100%. you know, I think that as parents, we have to, like, raise our kids to be grounded, yep. you know, because whatever it is they're having an issue with, we had an issue with with my parents raising me. 100%. And whether it be the culture of the day and what we were dealing with, they had to still instill, you know, principle, moral, integrity, yeah character in us even regardless of the allowing us to do whatever it is we did because you know now i'm sober be 19 years the 23rd of this month where i thought you know i would be teaching my kids how to roll fat joints you know till the day i was dead because Mm -hmm. i thought that's just normal yeah i thought that that's how it was gonna be you know we're gonna party and we're gonna ra- we're gonna have fun you know what i mean we're gonna listen to music we're gonna go to gigs we're gonna yeah. skate we're gonna have, you know i just thought that that was the creative space i didn't know that it was you know destroying people's dreams and people's lives were being completely taken out and now they're just suicide or yeah. ODing. and yeah. next thing you know good kids are dying early and you're like how'd that happen well it's it's where it's not under control and for me i was like i didn't really think about it back in the day when all my friends were dying and going to funerals yeah you know and going oh yeah drugs are bad i'm not gonna do those anymore mm-hmm. I, I, put it together, I, yeah. I just thought psh, couldn't handle it yeah you know it's, what not, gonna I mean? happen. it's not gonna happen to me no yeah. no and i mean it's either death or prison and and for me it was prison you know yeah, i mean get to that so for sure. so for me you know Growing up in L.A., picking, you know, the things I love started early. And I believe that, you know, the drugs was was something that was trying to trying to stop. Yeah. My dreams, because it, it, it does so many people. Yeah. But for some reason, I quit because I love skateboarding more. Yeah. And at 15, I quit. 17, I became, you know, who I basically was to, you know, uh, that was the beginning of Soy Skateboards. What year was that? The Hammerhead. What's that? How, uh, Damon, can you go put money in my meter, please? Yes. It's right across the street. I think it's uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. I'm sorry, yeah. man. So what, you, how old were you started that? It was 1984 Thanks, was Damien. when I actually started it, launched the company in Thrasher Magazine in April of 85. Okay. And that changed everything for you? Well, it, you know, I became my own entity. Yeah. I was not a sponsored writer anymore. Brand. I was my own brand. Yeah. And I was, you know, pushing, you know, new boundaries in skateboarding, getting big sponsors, huge uh, uh, contract. Who was your first big sponsor you had that was actually paying you? Um, I mean, I had my own company right around then, and uh, it was making quite a bit of money. Okay. Like thousands of dollars. Your but company, then okay. I started uh, doing wheels with Santa Cruz, did the Rockets, yep. and then I did the Team Hasoy with Santa Cruz, and that made, uh, I mean, I made Love a lot of money, like twenty thousand dollars a month at Damn. times you know what i mean and this is like were you saving money back then or just no, no out? i spent you know i made 20 i spent 
17. Damn. You know, I made sure I paid my bills and the rest went to traveling, partying, skating. Yeah. Taking everybody everywhere. And I, I was like, nah, we're going to rage. And we're going to keep coming and all this. Stuff. Yeah. Well, I just thought, you know what? What? A, I'm not stopping. Yeah. And and I didn't even think about it, even if it did stop, because I never had anything anyway. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I wasn't thinking, oh, I need to save because I need retirement. Retirement yeah. at 17 years old? Don't think about that shit. Come on. Like, no. I was like, give me a break. Uh, if I'm going to be an artist, I'm going to, like, be an artist, rich or poor. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, and that's the part about kind of like what I love about, you know, my father and how he kind of taught me how, it, you know, value isn't valued in how much money you have. I agree. Or how, how much you've sold a painting. I think he I taught me that it was about who you are and what you believe in 100%. and the things that you like. And yeah. then what matters to you and what's sentimental to you is priceless. And I think that that really came off on me as a businessman because yeah. I didn't get caught up in it. You know, I kept wanting to be the best and that's all I cared about. Yeah. And I didn't care about like all the money, the sponsors. I did business. I was pretty shrewd when it came to business because yeah. I was like, you know, getting schooled by my mom who was a business person. So yeah. she'd be like, okay, here's how you would organize a corporation Christian. Yeah. And I was like, Oh wow. Sick. LLC, all so that stuff, yeah. I'll do a 51, 49% joint venture partnership <laughs> with people, corporation. And they were like, okay, let's do it. And I was like, Whoa, that's awesome. This is pretty insane, you know, doing business like that and really, you know, seeing them recognize that I understood yeah. the, the that business, you know, at a young age. And Jimmy Z came out, right? Jimmy. Yeah, I used to rep. I mean, and I remember seeing you wearing, the, wearing those. I was like, Jim okay. Ganser went to school with my father. Oh, that's the guy. Okay. Before I was even born. And when I was in diapers at like six months Thank old, you, bro. Jim Ganser came to the house up in Beechwood Canyon. Okay. And in the kitchen, he was repping for Makaha skateboards. I heard of that, yeah. And at the time, I was six months old. And he came and gave us a skateboard, and my dad was pushing me across the... I was and that's playing Jimmy Z? on the skateboard. That's Jim Ganser. Okay, okay. Who created Jimmy Z. Okay. This is later, 85. Okay. And now... 85 he creates a brand and me and my father i'm like the guy at you blew, the time you blew it up that's how i found I'm out like about it. you know what we're gonna do a 40,000 first year 60,000 second year 90,000 third year contract wow you know so you know converse i had a converse contract thousand bucks a month wheel contract thousand bucks a month you know swatch watch 300 bucks a month you know the list goes on you know, independent, you know, thousand, you know, it goes wow. on. And I was just like, chick, ching, chick, ching. And then my royalties off boards, oh, crazy. I think were like three bucks a board. And I was, you know, getting these massive checks, wheels. I was selling a ton of wheels at the time, getting mass. So, and how was, old? That was your, like 18, 19, like 18, 19, Jeez. you know, and then and you're winning, yeah, 20, 21. And then what 22, about? 23 was when Vert was like, I had my ramp. I'm up yeah. in Hollywood in Echo Park. You know, I've got the WC Fields as a state. And I'm just wow. like, you know, got the Mustang. That's where you live? 69 Mustang com convertible with my Harley, 63 Harley. You're like the first rock star skater. Well, you know, I didn't look at it like that in a sense. I just did what I loved. Yeah. And I think that the whole L.A. scene creates that, that, that you know, iconic feel of maybe a personality yeah, yeah, that yeah. looks like rock star. But, but for me, I was just, just living, living. living. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? We <laughs> said it both at the same time because yeah. it's just real, yeah. you know? And then now I look back and I go, yeah, it's kind of rock starring out because I was doing the modeling. That, you're doing everything, TV that, videos. I mean, when you're a rock star, what do you do? You do the cool things. You're doing everything. And you know, to and me, winning. There, there's a connection you know, to fashion, yeah, music. You had the swag, sport, uh, athleticism. Yeah, you know, art. All that coming together, hundred percent, is your lifestyle. You had flair, and you had the, you had the swag too. Because I remember seeing you skating on trash when I was a kid, and you're you're the OG of cutting the sleeves off the shirts. I know punk rockers did, but for skateboarding, you brought the whole sleeveless all the way down cut, and you had the shit tied around your waist, and you fly in the air with your hair, and like all the swag flying. It was just no shirt and just the style, man. It was. You had and that swag, happened man. organically. I don't, yeah, I'm, I'm you know, sure. pe people always go, wow, he kind of like did that. Was it for, you know, sleeves uh, on uh, your head and um, shit? You know, 
to where it looks. I was like, it wasn't for looks at first. Yeah. But then when I put it on and I skated, I immediately knew there was a look. Yeah, it became you. That was your and, and, signature and look. It was a style. And, yeah. you know, being that I was all cut and I yeah. was all ripped and, you know, I never wore a shirt because I wanted to like all the girls to be like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, look my way. That's what you I'm know saying, what I mean? though. You had it all. You were a skater. You had the whole image. You had the looks. All that, man. The style, the fashion. And even when I was young, when I did the the love shirt, they called it the love shirt in Thrasher. Which one was that? It was uh, like 1983. I cut up a shirt. And I would always cut up my shirts down the sides all the yeah, way down. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Yeah, the original. Cut yeah. the neck. And, and it was like basically two like sandwich boards on Pretty your- Pretty much. You know, and, and I remember just, you know- it it wasn't like I was creating a style or a fashion. I was like, no, this, I just want it to be on so that I could sh- flag my colors. Yeah, 100%. And have a shirt that, that was representing me, but yeah. also it looked cool. Really cool. I was like, Because everything's dang. flying. It's like, you had, it's like you had a cape on it. Well, some I was point. showing my lats, my, yeah. my, my, my <laughs> rib cage, my, my abs were it. showing. Yeah, dude. And, and, and then, then I had my own waist. Style. Then I had my own style. Totally. And for me, I think that's where my, f- like, Shogo Kubo, you know, Jay, they had the cutoff shirt. Yeah. With the cutoff sleeves and the cutoff bottom. And I was like, oh, gosh. That's, <laughs> that's like Ted Nugent stuff. You know totally. what I mean? That's like, you know, headbangers, you know, kind of style. <laughs> like, it, I don't even think there was headbangers yet. Nah. I think it was like um, I know you're talking um, about rock that. and roll. Uh, almost, um, you know, the, 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 not Motley Crue, but it was, uh, 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 what was it? Iron the, Maiden. Just the glam rock Iron stuff too. Maiden. Yeah, yeah. That was huge. Yeah. The half Iron and Maiden. That. And then Ozzy came in and that's early eighties. And it was like, then it separated the two from like, you know, guys like us that were rock and roll, then went to punk. That's what I was going to say. See, so punk came in. When did that, when did that come in? 1980. You? Because Circle be- Jerks and Fear played Marina Del Rey Skate Park with the adolescents. So that's where punk rock and skateboarding stayed hand in hand. Collided. Okay. And it was like... No hip-hop really back then. They didn't even... Not only did they collide, but it was a straight fight in the parking lot. Oh, wow. You know, skinheads against the skaters. Wow. You know what I mean? And Tony Alva's standing there, and I'm on top of a car in the parking lot. Wow. It's like the gig's going on inside, and I'm sitting there looking. And next thing you know, the... They're beating each other up. Tony's socking. A guy comes around, punches <laughs> Tony in the eye, like, bang, sucker punches him. He goes inside. I go inside to check. I'm like, Tony, how you feeling? And he looks, and his eye's, like, fully shut. And wow. that was, like, the introduction to real punk rock gigs Yeah, at Marina. I mean. that That's what connected the skaters with the punks, pretty well, much. Well, it was like a match made in heaven. Yeah. Listen, it was aggression- Meets aggression, attitude with an attitude, connecting with, Street you know, shit. obviously politics involved. You yeah. know, punk rock came from politics. 100%. And movement. And, all that, yeah. and, and, and had, a, had a voice where skaters took it and went, no, this is our style. This is our attitude. We're going to shred your face off. Yeah. We're gnarly. You know what I mean? Yeah, and we shred radical. It, we sh- and yeah. we're going to, like, break coping when we skate now. And it brought this... This energy, energy to yeah. skateboarding that wasn't freestyle, 360s. I'm going to do a, a, a Christie right now, and I'm going to do a, 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 a like spacewalk. Yeah. It went from that to like backyard pools Black playing, flag, yeah. playing, you know, uh, suicidal um, Led Zeppelin to <laughs> now it's straight the clash. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and sex pistols. Yeah. Like the skating that was aggressive. Hit, the music's aggressive. And it was, it was over. We were, we were this, this newfound identity. Yeah. You know what I mean? At the time. And I was still your long haired surfer yeah, yeah, kid yeah. riding, you know, um, for the bones brigade in 1980 doing a demo, watching all this go down and, there's J Boy, you know, who I was raised by now for a couple of years, and he's got a like mohawk. He's <laughs> jumping off the thing, back flipping everywhere, and it's just like slamming like yeah, into so the aggressive. band, like not even in the pit, just straight <laughs> taking the band out. Like yeah, yeah. I was like, this is in sanity right now yeah super they're aggressive. chasing around girls are beating each other up i was like this is insane so then all the skateboard vhs's came out bones we had all that most of the soundtrack was punk rock and that was later 
Yeah. That's mid, you know, 83. You're right, you're right. You you're know right. what I mean? Yeah. A lot happened between 80 and 82. You know yeah. what I mean? I turned pro. Skateboarding yeah. went to backyards and pretty much there was only a couple skate parks left. And Mostly ramps, right? Thrasher yeah. Magazine came out in 81. How many covers did you get with that, you think? Thrasher covers. I think I've had like nine or nine or so. Wow. Maybe nine with the last one might be 10. Wow. You know? And I changed a lot, that magazine. So blessed a lot. to have, you know, the covers of Thrasher. I mean, yeah. it was a, it's a milestone, you know, in your career. I think still even today, you know, people revere that as something. And I, I love that about skateboarding that there is a place that you can you can say hey this is like the hall of fame or yeah like, it is, you yeah. know this is a academy award or 100%. an oscar or something like that that people um Always can covers. really really look to as a goal as a marker and yeah. to have that and to reach that at such a young age, it's insane. you know, and then to be in the mag as much as I was. When you first, it, we, we you saw ourselves in the first coverage, you, was it was it like, you remember that, seeing yourself on a cover for the first time? Um, it, it's almost surreal because, yeah. you know, you're a kid. I was a kid at the time. You know what I mean? I think I was like 16, you know, Damn. something like that. And when you're on the cover, you feel like you've made it. Made it, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, this is this is where, you know, you've been... You know, it's not like you're the chosen one, but yeah. you have you have accomplished something. Be recognized by your peers, by skateboard. Yeah, like now sponsors are calling; they're wanting to, you know, and not all who get the cover have that kind of, yeah, you know, uh, response. But yeah. for me, I was trying to be a businessman, an artist, and a a you know a passionate person. Yeah, in what I did, and that meant that I was going to try and go around the world. I just yeah. thought I'm going to be around the world and I'm going to be global and nothing was going to get in my way of being the best. And so for me, it wasn't about the business. It was just about being the best. And when you're trying to be the best, the business just comes. Totally comes And with I try it, yeah. to encourage kids a lot because they're like, what about my career? What about yeah. you know this? And I'm like, just rip. And next thing you know, you'll be able to choose. Obviously, your character now and your reputation or, or personality you get clicky in skateboarding now because yeah. there's so many clicks. Back then, there was one click. It was like 35 guys that were pro, 100%. and we traveled together, and yeah. that was it. No one else could do it. Yeah. That was it. Yeah. We were like our own little world. Chosen few. Yeah. Much. yeah, on a backyard ramp, skating for you know 900 bucks for first place. Wow. <laughs> <That's> crazy. <laughs> but you know that, that made us fall in love with it that much more, I believe, yeah. because we weren't there for the money. Yeah. You know, I think that money sometimes changes your, your perspective of what you do. Yeah. And I think that's what's the, you know, the hurdle for these kids in these days. 100%. They, they, they create their career out of money versus out of their passion and skateboarding. And then you see the kids that just skate that end up getting paid. Yeah. That don't care. And you're like, wow, that's the organic way. That's kind of like the, 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 um, you know, the natural way. Yeah. And then there's the business way. And I think that that sometimes can backfire. Oh, and short, end short up, term thinking too. You know, well, it ended up being kind of like uh, manufactured. Yeah. You know, manufactured careers. And I think we're coming around again to where there's a lot of skaters that are just real deal. 100%. All they want to do is skate. Yeah. And you got to follow them around or else you're going to miss it. Yeah, exactly. And they're like, you want to be his sponsor. Yeah. You know, cause he's going to fly by the camera is going to miss him, but everyone's going to be talking about it. It's like, exactly. the, it's like the skater skater. Yeah. You know, and I think that's what I'd rather be almost recognized for, you know, if I were to talk about a legacy 100%. or what people would speak about me. And that's why I always follow Jay Adams. He didn't care about business. He didn't care about what people thought. He showed up, did what he loved to do, yeah. acted how he wanted to act, hung out with whoever he wanted to hang out with. And, you know, he let his skating do the speaking and yeah. his lifestyle do the speaking. And when you don't, you, you, you almost, you know, feel like that's hard to do because yeah. it is because it's just who he is. Yeah. He doesn't try to do that. That's who he is. Yeah, 100%. And so for me, I always took that into consideration because I was such a, a, a performer. 
I was out doing business. I was showing yeah. up at demos and I would have to like bring bring it, you know what I mean? And end it with like, a finale and then do the <laughs> full on autograph signing. It was yeah. like I was doing this, this entertainer stuff yeah. and I was having fun with it. Yeah. Because I was, you know, manipulating it to what I wanted, you know. Yeah. It was money and girls and, and 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 traveling the world and having my business and really yeah. it was like kind of like all went together. Yeah. Where I always stayed grounded because of a guy like Jay Adams. Yeah. Because he's like, don't let, <sighs> I'm not into that. So I'd be like, oh, yeah. You know what? I do this, but I do it my way. And everybody's like, because they would tell me, you're going to do this. I'm like, no, I'm not. They're like, what? You're going to show up yeah. at this time. No, I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to do it when I show up. And they're like, <sighs> we're always on a soy time. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like the promoters and even Jimmy Z when they we would go do Jimmy Z demos. I remember... Um, I think it was Hackett one time, you know, he's organizing it, got to be there at 12 because we're starting the demo and yeah. I'm like, didn't show up till like one thirty or something Damn. and he's pulling his hair out because the promoters are going, what's going on? And I'm calling him up, you know, like from the hotel, dude, just tell him I'm coming. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I knew in my head I was going to show up. Yeah. And in my head, I knew I was going to perform and, and bring a, a full it. on yeah. like, you know, uh, 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 kind of like just blow, blow the house up. Yeah. Right. And but they didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> they were like, what's going to happen? Yeah. And uh, I remember just showing up and just talking to the crowd leading it up getting the music going and just yeah. next thing you know we're just like in the moment and the place is going crazy yeah. and i'm like this is the feeling that i love about skateboarding yeah it's about the people loving what we do yeah and showing it the energy levels were off the charts we were just doing what we loved. It was new. It wasn't yeah. something that was done before. Yeah. And we're doing a demo on a 16-foot wide Sick. vert ramp, 10 feet tall, 9-foot yeah. transition with a foot of vert Damn. in the middle of Nordstrom parking lot in <laughs> D.C., you know, stuff like this yeah. all over the United States. And, you know, just uh, um, bringing bring in something that was had flavor. And I think the culture was people who were into punk rock, yeah. hip hop, rock and roll, uh even even the, the 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 musicians, the the artists, yeah. the jazz, the blues, the soul, all these people were into skateboarding because we included that in our, you know, lifestyle. It was inclusive for everybody. And in LA, I grew up here in LA going to like the King King, which is a blues bar, hanging yeah. out with my dad listening to blues. I mean, I'm listening to Patsy Klein and, and, and John Lee Hooker yeah. in my car. And then came Sade and, you know, Best. all these, you Prince, know, the, the Go-Go's, Madonna. Uh, uh, Madonna. When that came out and yeah. Prince, I was all over it. Matter yeah. of fact, I think it's in my first interview in Thrasher. It's like, it's awesome. he, he likes Madonna. <laughs> you know, he listens to the Go-Go's, you know, yeah. and he loves Prince. Because everybody was so punk. He right? listens to Sheila E., you know what I mean? Yeah. And I was such a... Um, I was into clubs and dancing and girls and all that was just like such the the music at the time. And I think that the um, the Odyssey right here mm -hmm. was a huge influence on dance, the okay. style of dance. That's when Freaking came out. Freaking, yeah. And, yeah. you know. Did you it, break dance ever? Oh, yeah. Your pop we had, we had the shit. linoleum, the cardboard. Yeah. <laughs> we had our crew. I had my Nike jumpsuit. Sick. You know what I mean? We'd go down to the the three, two, one down in Santa Monica and we'd be in there and we'd be breaking and it's down awesome. in Venice. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, That's amazing. You know what I mean? I mean, we were on it when it came to so those things. Who, who brought the, who brought the air Jordans into skateboarding? You know, that's a good question. I just remember, um, you guys all rocked them, man. I wonder who wore the first ones. I Jordan think we, ones. I think we all saw it all at the first time. Like all at the same time, and when it was, you know, looking for a shoe that was good, you Skating. know, Vans was great, Converse, Chuck Taylors were great. They, it wasn't even on the radar, really. Like, um, to wear a basketball shoe to skate, that, it's crazy. That, I don't know what year it was. I think what year did I start riding Chucks? I think it was probably, um, eighty three, eighty four. Okay. Air. 
Air Jordans came out what? Around that time, uh, J- Jordan around 1s. Around yeah. then. Mm-hmm. And I remember trying them and going, oh, these are great for jump ramping. You know what I mean? Because yeah, I rode ramps. them on vert, and I was like, these are like moon boots for me. Yeah. And I wasn't digging them. Okay. And that's when I got Chuck Taylors, and I'm like, Chuck Taylors. And plus, I looked cool. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, Chuck Taylors look sick. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was, yeah. it was like what Vans you know, did for punk rock and Chuck Taylor. 100%. It was like the look. And for me, I was like, man, Chuck Taylors, and they work the best for my style of skateboarding. Yeah. And I immediately got sponsored by them. So, okay. you know, that that was out the but window for me. You guys were rocking Nike before the SBs and all that stuff. You didn't think about, you didn't even think about a Jordan to be a skate shoe. That's when I first saw I was like, damn, they were Jordans. The, that's cool. That's the only Nike I ever wore, though. Yeah, yeah. I didn't wear any other Nike. Yeah. That's the only one Nike shoe I ever wore. You yeah. Know? And... It was it was it was good for jump ramping, like I said. Yeah, I think I got photos support. of me jump ramping with think, them. Yeah, and it was good for a minute, but then I was I was a a converse Coast kid. Guy. Yeah. What do you, what do you think your What do you think all your confidence came from? And did you ever feel like giving up skating, or like you didn't have it anymore? Are you, are you like maybe insecure about your skills, or you lost some contests, and you maybe you know what I mean? Do you ever feel like that at all? You know, you always want to perform well. I think that that's the nervousness or the butterflies you get in anything you do, you yeah. know, even when you, you do anything. And for me, it was like overcoming that was part of the challenge, you know, and really you have to, you know, I remember having to go to this hula thing when I was like in second grade and then I had to do the hula in front of the school and I was like, nope. Oh, shit. I practiced. Yeah. I was supposed to do it. I went down there that day. I saw everybody and I'm like, no way. Damn. I'm not going to do the hula in front of everybody. No way, dude. I can't do that. And yeah. I just remember going, oh, that sucks. Wow. I didn't have any brave. There was no bravery in that. Yeah, yeah. And then from then on, every time something like that came up, I'd be like, got to just go. Got to do, do it. And I think that helped me break the ice on what I wanted to do, how yeah. I wanted to overcome something, whether it's an insecurity, like you yeah. said, or or a phobia. You know what I mean? People have those things. But for me, it was it was almost like you just had to step in. And next thing you know, that feeling would just go away. Yeah. But you have to step in. Yeah. So every time I went to a contest, I'm nervous, even though I was supposed to win. You know, yeah. here comes Tony Hawk and me, and we're going to go up again. And I'm like, but I'm sitting here going, I wonder if I could beat everybody else, even mm-hmm. though I knew I could beat everybody else. You know, and then I had to beat him or, you know, maybe a, another guy, whether it was Gator or Chris Miller, because yeah. they were looking good. You know, yeah, it was Chris their Miller. spot. And I was just like, oh, gosh. And then I would just go like this. And then I would just, it was almost like this. Um, mindset you have to set you have to go i'm gonna do this i'm gonna yeah. kill it i'm gonna smash this i'm gonna <laughs> i'm not staying i'm not gonna bail yeah. I, and i talked myself into it every time i skated wow. and i still do that today yeah whenever there's a contest or something i gotta do i'm like telling myself you got it's easy piece of cake what are you thinking like i yeah. just kind of like go over that and you know what that does it's like you're, you're sowing seed of confidence. Yeah. And then here comes the, the harvest, you mm-hmm. know, here comes the fruit of it is actually performing and yeah. pulling it off. And so for me, that has always been my, my way of, uh, uh, taking adrenaline yeah. and using it Your for benefit. my advantage. Yeah, yeah. And I remember sitting on the deck, the last run of the day, all I got to do is stay on really. And I could win or get second place. Yeah. One of the two. And I'm just sitting there going, this sucks. Mm -hmm. And then I shake it off. And then I'm like, play the song. I'm standing on the (laughs) deck. And then I'm like, put on Madonna. And everybody's like sitting there going, all right, dropping in whenever you're ready. And I'm like, my feet are tingling. My hands are tingling. And I can't go. There's just no way I'm dropping in. So I'll just sit there. I'll move around i'll start dancing i'll dance i'll be like come on what what and then i'm like switch the song i want something else put on acdc and they're like this guy what's he doing but they don't know that i'm getting my body into the the mood to be able to perform because i got 45 seconds yeah to actually do it all 
And then all of a sudden they put it on and then I go like this, oh, they put it on. Oh, they did all that for me. Now what? I better make now it. Now I'm going to put it on. Wait, wait, no. I better make it now. Yeah. <laughs> I put the pressure on myself. Yeah. You know, what I mean? it's like that, that reverse psychology thing where now, oh, I just told them, made them wait all that time. Yeah. Oh, now you are not bailing for sure. All eyes on me. You be a kook. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and then you just kill it. And next thing you know, your body, it's running on like all cylinders. There's not a cylinder that's not firing. And matter yeah. of fact, you get you got new cylinders and the adrenaline turns into, you know, this power and then power turns into performance. And next thing you know, you're finishing your run and it's like the most euphoric feeling. It's I'm better sure, than any man. drug. Yeah. It's better than anything, natural you know, high, high. in this world that you try to find, you know, and 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 I remember just doing that every time I skated, whether win or lose. That's what I was going to say, yeah. Win or lose, too. This yeah. is something that, you know, even though you lose, you do those same things, you go through those same motions, yeah. and I think that that's how we need to deal with life and yeah. life's experiences. We need to constantly... You know, get back up, see what we did, evaluate it, and get better. Yeah. You know, did I've learned more in my, my failures than I've ever learned in my success. I'm sure. Did you ever become addicted to winning? Like, you were like on a winning streak, like I have to win. You, you put a lot of pressure on yourself to be that guy, the number one? For sure. I think there's a, 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 there's a healthiness to that, and then there's an unhealthiness to it. Because I would put the pressure on myself, and it would, you know, a lot of times pay... But then when it wouldn't, I'd be like, what I do? And I wouldn't... Your worst critic. I wouldn't go down in a hole and be depressed. I would go back and I would think of how I could do better. Yeah. And I think that those are the people that learn versus um, basically get into a place of insecurity. Yeah. You know, and I would learn from my mistakes. And I was taught, what did you do wrong? Evaluate it. Get Make sure it doesn't happen again. And for me, that has always been my uh, ticket to, you know, when I lose. Yeah. It was something that I, it would almost be like a fire. Okay. That would start to burn. It would stoke the fire. Yeah. yeah. Because sometimes when you're winning a lot, you get idle and you're, you're, you're not challenged. Yeah. And next thing you know, it's like easy. And you know what? I'm just winning. Yeah. You know, but when you have competition and then you lose, you know, that edge is, is you got to keep that edge sharp. And for me, I think that's the, the part about, you know, trying to stay on top of anything is like always staying sharp because there's always somebody trying to take you out. 100%. You know what I mean? And, and in skateboarding, you know, it didn't matter if I won or lost. What mattered to me is that I did my best and then I did it the way I wanted to do it, yeah. too. And I think that that's what has created my career yeah. and what I've been recognized and, and, and kind of liked for. Yeah. And then it was my personality, my attitude, my style, yeah. my, you know, um, um, music, my friends yeah. and where I grew up, the things I do and skate. Like yeah, yeah. that, that all came as a package. And for yeah. me, that's why skateboarding is to me something more than just a sport. It's a lifestyle. It's a, it's what we do 24 hours a day. We don't pick and, it up. And you're thinking and, about and, it and, too. Yeah. And, and, and like do it nine to five. Yeah. Only when I'm on my board, I'm a skater. No, I'm a skateboarder through and through. Matter of fact, everything I do is de derived from skateboarding. skateboarding. Yeah. You know, how I look. The yeah. way I talk, yeah. who I hang out with. I mean, yeah. you know, obviously we have a lot of different, you know, things we do, whether it be music, whether it be fat business, yeah, totally. you know what I mean? But everything is based around my platform of the, 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 the perspective of being a skateboarder. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it, it's a trip, you yeah. know, to think like that. And that's why I, I always say skateboarders are unique. They're artists. Yeah, 100%. You can't you know, put them in a box because they're all different. Yeah. Matter of fact, they're pff, a lot of them are peculiar yeah. and, and unusual <laughs> and very, you know, some 100%. of them you would call special because <laughs> they're so it's unique true. and, and it, it, it can be uh, uh, um, a little bit strange at times. Yeah. But the, the pureness of it is what's so, you know, 
authentic, authentic and, yeah. and attractive when you see somebody like that. It's like yeah. a musician that you see on the stage and then you yeah. see them in real life and they're really like that. Yeah. And you're like, wow. Yeah. Now you're intrigued. Yeah. Now you can't wait to hear, follow, see. 100%. And know everything about, about the person them, yeah. off the stage, yeah. let alone on the stage. Did your dad try to escape? He was a surfer in the 50s and 60s, you know, North Shore, Sunset Beach. He got a sequence in Life magazine once. and it's crazy. Um, you know, he skated marina. He was doing carve grinds before I did in the dog bowl. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I was like, dang, dad That's just awesome, did a, man. a carve grind. But then, you know, soon enough, like within months, I was doing everything and he was managing. And now he was just like behind me 100%. Yeah. And Super he, supportive dad, man. Yeah. It's amazing, man. Yeah. Your relationship's incredible. Um, what was I going to say to you before that about? Oh, yeah. So, obviously, you created two amazing tricks, probably more, but the Rocket Air and the Christ Air, obviously, tricks I never ever could figure out how to do, maybe like off a jump ramp. But do you remember creating those tricks or just it just happened? Or do you remember that, that moment? Oh, yeah. I remember like yesterday, uh, Rocket Air, we were in Texas, Houston, and we're at this contest and we're just in a hotel. I think the Bones Brigade guys and. John Lucero, Neil Blender, yeah. Lance Mountain. I think we're all just in there and we're like making up tricks on a on a bed with our boards. And yeah. I'm like two feet on the tail, two hands on the nose and just be like, right? And then I remember we're like, yeah, that'd be sick. That's like a rocket air, right? Damn. We're like, let's try it tomorrow. <laughs> you know, man, I think me, me and Lance were like the only guys to try it. I think. Did, did I tried it, it once. Lance tried it once, and then I'm like, "Oh wait," because I was doing one footed airs at the time. Yeah, I remember like, those. Yeah, you know, anti judos yeah. and judos. Yeah, and I just remember going boom, I, like six feet out, just yeah. whoosh, and just getting into the position, like second or third, third. You know the rocket air, right? Third try. Yeah, third try. Like Damn. literally made it within a handful of tries. Wow! And then the contest was that day. Damn, and did, I did it in the contest. You show, yeah, show the world oh, that yeah, day. Oh yeah, yeah. It was it was one of those uh, spontaneous, <laughs> you know, moments yeah. of creativity, artistic, you know, um, atmosphere, and you know, us just having fun. Yeah. And then it becoming something that really has been a a, a real, you know, signature maneuver for 100%. me. And the Christ Air. And then the Christ Air came <sighs> right after, which was. You know, all these guys were doing these no-footed airs like Monty Nolder, yeah, Monty Tony Nolder. Magnuson, and they're just flying with their feet out, right? You guys went head-to-head for the highest air, too. Remember Tony Magnuson? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We'll get to that. We'll get. Yeah. Um, and, and we're doing airs, and then I'm like, wait a minute. My name was Christ at the time, right? Yeah. 1985, I think. <laughs> 84, I think, in the magazine, Thrasher. And, and I remember... Um, Sitting there watching it, and I'm like, wait a minute. Boom. I was like, I'll get into the crucifix, co- you know, with my dude. feet together, and I'll pose it like like Jesus on the cross. <sighs> and I went up, boom. Sk- bam. And everyone just went, the Christ there. And it dude. was it was like one of those moments where, you know, I never grew up in church, never read a Bible. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? That, yeah. I was just like, of course I'm Christ. <laughs> You know, yeah, I'm like a god. You know what I mean, whatever. I wore crosses. So and, you know, I invented the Christ there. Of course, I invented the so Christ there. What do you think? So how to bow in your face? <laughs> you know what I mean? So how to feel doing that? Must have felt so amazing doing that uh, shit. You started doing it, it consistently. It, it was like you know, it, it it's something that you don't plan, but ends up becoming your your crowning achievements yeah. like like what you'll be recognized for for the rest of your career yeah. and yeah. even to the generations to come yeah you know because my kids sitting there playing every single you know uh, uh, uh playstation or xbox game that's skateboarding they all got christ there in it they that's all got great, rocket air in it and they're yeah. like i'm doing your trick dad you know what i mean so it's gonna go on but at the time you're not thinking like we're gonna you know, be in the annals of skateboarding history and even American history. Like my hammerhead, you know, skateboard got inducted into the Smithsonian. Like, yeah, that's crazy. You know, a couple of years ago <laughs> yeah. with uh, Steve Van Doren getting the waffle shoemaker yeah. in and we got inducted at that's the same amazing, time man. at MIT in Boston. And 
you know, these are things that you don't think about as being so, you know, I mean, extraordinary. Like, yeah. for me, that's, that's like, insane. it goes beyond. It's like being yeah. in the Hall of Fame or something, yeah. you know, when I got inducted. It's you awesome. know, it's like, wait a minute. I, 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 I've done this much for something I've loved, and then it's now being recognized. It's amazing, dude. You know, so... So that's like one of those things with the Christ Air, the Rocket Air, you know, even the Tweak Air, you know, the backside yeah, Tweak yeah, Air. Tweak, yeah. Like I did that. And then the Body Jar is another oh, trick yeah, that right. I invented. And, and, you know, I think about it now as a man of God, as a person that has faith in Jesus Christ. It's a pastor at the Sanctuary Church. And yeah. I travel around sharing my story, going from being addicted to drugs, going to prison, to getting set free by the power of God's love and yeah. through just, you know, understanding like, you know, what I believe in. And that's yeah. my faith, yeah. you know, in God. And to, to now go, wait a minute. I invented the Christ there and way it's, back then. It's crazy, and man. now I'm a Christian, you know, and, and it's, it's just, it's so ironic circle, how I man. think it's that, you know, if, if God were right here right now, he'd be cracking up, you know, and I know he's, he, you know, when, when I discovered that there was, you know, this, this, uh, uh, relationship that you have with God and I was talking to God in prison yeah, and I'm like, God, oh, that's so trippy. And he's like, I know, isn't that funny? <laughs> It's crazy. Oh, you're man. funny, God. And I'm sitting there just going, wow, God's having a field day because he knew back then what would happen in the future yeah. and that I would get a revelation of it and we'd be laughing together. And then at that moment, I realized that my life had a purpose. There was a plan and that I was to be an example, a role model, a person who fights for, you know, what you believe in yeah. and really has a passion for it and is is someone who 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 wants to share it. You yeah. know what I mean? I mean, yeah. why wouldn't we share what we love with people? You know, I 100%. crack up on people on my social media when they're like, you know what? I love the 80s guy, but would you shut up about, you know, this whole, you know, religious thing? And I'm like, so I guess, you know, if I were to be a skateboarder and you didn't like skateboarding, you'd be like, you know what? I like the, the, the drug addict, but why are you talking about skate? I can't yeah. stand skateboarding. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh wait, great point. wait, oh, that's my whole life. That's what I love. Yeah. So you're going to tell me, you know, I, I just crack, I laugh inside and then I, I private message him or I just say it right on my social yeah. media and I, everybody's like, dude, you don't have to like, you know, you know, rebut to these haters. And I'm like, I love doing it because, yeah. <laughs> because, you know, everyone needs to feel loved regardless if they're being hateful. Hundred percent. And for me, I think that's what comes over in this world, you know, when it comes to whether it's faith, religion, God, you know, for me it's, you know, Christ Jesus and in that relationship. You know, I think that that's yeah. where we try to just be real. We want to be 100%. We don't want to be a poser. We don't yeah. want to be fake. We don't want to be phony. I come from a, a, a culture where all we did was point out posers all day long. Yeah, we were sure. like poser, kook, yeah. hypocrite, lame. You know what I mean? Like all day long. That's what we would do. Yeah. But then in my faith, I'm like, you know, I, I feel and think those things when I see it, but I don't act that way anymore. I just love on these people and try to encourage them, try to lift them up and, 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 and try to edify people when when they're kind of stuck in their way of thinking. And I know you deal with it a lot. Yeah, Come on, Toby. Sure. In your world and what 100%. you do and what you you're fighting for. And, and, and I love that that you have that challenge. Yeah. You know, what I mean, it's a challenge, mm -hmm. it to, a challenge. to convince people of your convictions. And for me, that's pretty much the basic, you know, foundation of, you know, my faith is just yeah. I just want to be real about it. So so before you went to jail, you weren't religious at all. You didn't grow up going to church. There's no religion in your house. Never read a Bible once. So you get you get into jail and obviously you obviously you, were you str on drugs going into jail? Yeah, I was on drugs going into jail. Got arrested. Went to the 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 basically the uh, holding tank. Had my first. Was it coming back from Hawaii? It was going to Hawaii. Okay. Got arrested at the airport. And how old were you? I was. What was it? Two thousand January. So I was thirty-two. And where was your career at that point? 
Oh, I was uh, running from the cops for five years, you know, um, wow. had a bench warrant in Orange County, um, basically been doing meth since 1980, I mean, 93, every single day. Were you still skating? I mean, you know, I got busted holding the skateboard. Yeah, okay, I was okay. skating. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I was, Wow, man. you know, at the trade show with Bail Bondsman's looking for me. And what do you think got you to that point? Like, how did you end up on that point? Like, well, I think you know what I was trying to find my identity in like life in in a creative place, kind of like you know how usual artists do. They'll take a bunch of drugs, yeah. And they'll try to find that new song or write that new yeah, lick, yeah, yeah. and yeah. they want to get into a place to write. You know that that you know make a movie yeah. or, or whatever it may be. And I was in that place trying to figure out what was next for Hasoy. Yeah. And I, I always tell people I was looking for it in all the wrong places in drugs and girls and parties and in pushing the limits, thrill seeking, you know, me, I had, credit cards and, and thousands of dollars my whole life and next thing you know i'm like hustling selling dope to get dope and having a party and just living this like underground life that i thought i was having a ball we hang out with different people like different group of people that got into that dark space or is it oh yeah there's a whole like yeah. you know field of people that love doing that because you know you, you, it's quick it's a hustle mm -hmm. that's why drug dealing is kind of like a hustle you make a lot of money yeah. And you don't do anything. Yeah. You just know people and you try not to get busted. Yeah. And then that thrill, it gets to be almost like you, you chase that high. Yeah. But for me, I was a user and I thought, I'm just having fun and I'm manipulating it for what I want. I wanted, you know, the party. I wanted the girls. And then just, you know, everybody was all, Christian is soy. You do meth. You do crystal meth. And next thing you know, I've got free meth coming at me left and right. Would you skate with my kids? Will you hang out with my kids? I mean, it was bananas, the favor I got in the in, in, yeah. in the dope world. And then, you know, with the girls. They were enabling it, it, you because who you were. No, and then I was a functioning addict because I could go outside. I could speak to people. I could act like I'm not on drugs, even though I was like, probably a buck Damn. you know 45 you know what i mean looking all cut but if you knew me before yeah. you'd be like whoa he looks a little sucked up you yeah. know what i mean but people didn't know me wow. you know I, I only knew people in la and now i'm in orange county you know raging and next thing you know i'm sitting there going you know wow i want to quit i'm gonna make yeah. this sick comeback i'm gonna get sober i'm gonna be like bruce lee i'm gonna be like I'm going to smash it. Bruce Lee was 35 at Enter the Dragon. He looked cut. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah it's going to be sick. And then <laughs> I got arrested. Boom. So what, what did you have on you get arrested? I had like a pound of meth. Damn. Yeah. Pound of meth. Yep. Going to the airplane. Yep. Yep. I get, I get to the, the jail and I was on the news. My family knew, found out on the news and I get there and I walk in and these guys are like, dude, Christian Asoy, what's up? I'm like, dang, we we saw you on the news, dude. I had your board when I was a kid, dude. Oh my right. God. And I'm like, what are you here for? He's like murder. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh shit. shit. I was all sick. Yeah. I was like, sick. that's sick. I'm like, wow. that's, uh, you know, I'm trying to act, you know, like, whoa. I'm like, what are you going to do? He's like 145 years, you know, uh, double life sentence, bro. I'm like, so what, what am I going to, you know, I'm like, dude, they were telling me I'm doing 10 years. They're like, yeah, bro. You, 10 it, years. Walk in the park, bro. No you, worries. Cause you'll be out of here in no time. And I was like, compared to his sentence, I was like, sounded great. So you're like, you, but I was still thinking like. Hawaii Five O at the airport where they were like interrogating me, telling me you're gonna do ten years, Christian. I was like, easy for dope. I was like, easy, Dano. How much, how much meth? I was like, okay, Dano. How much meth was it? How much? What you had on you? Like a pound. Damn. Right. Man. And you know that holds a basically a ten year sentence. And so they're like ten years, and then all of a sudden it hit me. I'm going back to my cell, and I get my first phone call, and I'm calling my my wife who was my girlfriend at the time jennifer shout out to jennifer and we went to church for the first time a few months ago because she was quitting drugs and going to church 
She was still doing her so thing. You guys are partying together. We were still hanging out, dating, but she was like, I'm quitting drugs because one of her friends almost OD'd and died or she saw some crazy stuff happen. Damn. And I went to church with her. Nothing happened. I was like, sick, whatever, you know. God's <laughs> good. I'm good. Dope's good. Chicks are good. <laughs> like, if I'm a good person, I'm going to heaven because I believed in karma. Yeah. I was a karma guy. Yeah. So I thought being a good guy is what's going to get me into this, you know, place on the whatever. You yeah. know what I mean? I didn't think about it other than that so i was like this good guy my whole life yeah and she got caught up now i'm sitting here calling her and she's like hey i'm like i'm gonna do 10 years i don't know if i can handle it she's like i love you we just gotta trust in god and i'm like god i need an attorney <laughs> i need bail i'm like yeah. i'm not dying you know what i mean yeah. i'm like i need an attorney i need bail she's like no god's gonna help us get a bible and i was like what and immediately I thought about my name, Christian, nickname Christ. I invented the Christ, Christ there. Yeah, I was yeah. like this. And God's like reminding me like this. <laughs> He's like, remember all this? Yeah. And I was like, go get a Bible. It's like, I've never read a Bible. I remember going in my room first night, opening it up and just going, what Genesis Star Trek movie? Yeah. I was like, Revelation. I was like, what's that? John, boring. I was like, <laughs> who's who's like John and Mark? Mm -hmm. And then it went to Psalms. Like there's a book that says Psalms, but I was like, Psalms? What is this? This book is crazy. Columns and numbers. I was like, is so this- was your first day there? Yeah, first wow. day. Okay. I'm like, is this like a dictionary? And I've never read one sentence in the Bible. And then I get to a book called Kings, and I'm like, Kings? I was like, oh, yeah, that, that's, that's, that's my me. book. Yeah, that's yeah. my book right there. <laughs> How the stupid, right? How stupid is that? <laughs> like, still thinking you're the man. Yeah, you would guess. Like, you, yeah. And I get and I open it up, and it's when, you know, somebody who you kind of know about, even growing up without knowing God, is like King David or Solomon. You've heard these I heard things. Those names, yeah. I've seen the movie The Ten Commandments, you know, mm -hmm. even though I never read a Bible. Yeah. You know what I mean? So here it is. It's like King David's about to die, and he's charging his son Sol Solomon that if he'll follow the Lord all the days of his life, that it'll prosper him, and there'll always be a king on the throne, meaning that God's favor will rest upon him and mm -hmm. i was like it was like that second chapter i've ever read and immediately it was like the holy spirit spoke to me and it, it, it like this peace came over me that i've never felt before and then i just was so like in it like it it became my life at that yeah. moment and i remember ripping through like 30, 40 chapters, you know, all of Kings 1, Kings 2, and then I went behind it to Samuel, and I'm just, like, devouring it. And I remember wow. telling God that first night, okay, God, if you get me bail, I promise I'll never do drugs again. I'll go tell <laughs> all the kids. I'll never, you know, I I'll be a good example, and just let me get bail. And I was going to bail hearing. Okay. I went to bail, and it was like death, uh, you're a threat to the community, danger to society, no bail. <laughs> and I was like, damn, there's no I God. I looked up and I was like, didn't we make a deal? <laughs> and I, I was like, what, what, what's going on? And But in my heart, I knew that I meant it, that I wasn't just saying it. Yeah. And, you know, the Bible says if you search for God with your whole heart, you'll find him. And at that moment, that's what I did. And from that moment on, the next couple of weeks, all I did was read the word, get sent back to San Bernardino County Jail was where they housed all the federal inmates at the time. Yeah. And I got processed in there. And then they had Bible studies every night with all the islanders. And how long are you there for? Almost two years. OK, two out of 10 years you did. Yeah. Yeah. And then they built the federal detention center in Hawaii, um, probably the middle of 2001. Right before the bombing. Yeah. And we all moved over there on like a, uh, like Con Air. Con Air Con basically Air, flew movie. us over. Yeah. And then we ended up moving in there and that became the federal detention center. But every wow. federal inmate was in all the cells at, uh, at San Bernardino. And that's when I opened up my heart, gave my life to Christ. And, and the rest is history. It was like 
it was like my Bible college when I was there. All I did was go to Bible study every day after every time there'd be a guy that would volunteer to come in and speak to us about the Bible, sing, bring their, you know, their ghetto blaster or bring a guitar. Yeah. I was there. And then, um, do you have any problems in jail? Not any. That's it's awesome. incredible. He respected because, you. You know, I don't know. I grew up on the street. Yeah. And so I knew, you know, respect is earned. You know what I mean? I didn't, you know, sit there and try to be a gang member. You know what I mean? But I knew gang members. Yeah. So I knew how they, you know, the the respect level. And yeah. then there was politics involved. And I didn't know what it was like, really. I heard about it yeah. on the street. But when you get to jail, you kind of know there's segregation. Yeah. It's... There's a lot of politic involved yeah. and you got to choose. And then it's, it's pretty crucial what goes on in there. And I got to know it because every race was a skater, okay. whether it was the woods, the South Siders or the, or the, uh, the, the brothers or the, yeah. the chinos or the others. I mean, it was like yeah, was everyone was a skater, skater at, one at one time point, yeah. and they're like, dude, Christian is always here. And then I would see him coming. We're in a 60 man tank Next thing you know, he goes, hey, check that out. <laughs> Point at me. You know what I mean? I'm like, hey, how's it going? They're like, what's your name? I'm like, Christian. They're like, Christian what? I'm like, Christian, I saw you. No way. <laughs> and they'd always say no way. Because yeah. they're like, what are you doing here? I'm like, <laughs> I'm like I don't know. But uh, I think I got busted. <laughs> yeah. Yo, <name. laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, it it was like. I became kind of like the the incel, you know, Christian. Yeah. And I was able to go to all the different races and hang out with them, pray with them, because they all wanted pictures. They all wanted me to sign something to their kid. They don't want yeah. their kids to get in trouble. Yeah. They wanted them, you know. And then I did scared straight programs inside. They would oh, bring them cool. in. We would do them, me and some crazy looking gnarly gang member and then a big huge Samoan you know wow. and we'd give our testimonies and I'd bring my Thrasher magazine and be like look you know and we would try to encourage these kids to not make the same mistakes yeah and you know being there I think really was foundational for me to get taken out of the world yeah. to be able to like focus on who I am yeah what mattered to me and then to even appreciate what i've done yeah because i didn't even appreciate what i didn't even realize how much i did for skateboarding you know what i mean until, until i was taken yeah, out, out of it yeah. and i was the smoke cleared i was sober and now i'm thinking about like wow what is what matters and the next thing you know family friends you know skateboarding what we did all the things that we you know triumphed and and accomplished and then next thing you know i was like wow super appreciative now i was grateful yeah we came now out, i was now i was receiving you know accolade you know uh um approval or or affirmation from people and i was like wow that's awesome super humbling coming out it, it was a hundred percent more humble and i was a pretty humble guy you know i would yeah. sign to the last autograph i love my fans i gave everything away and i knew that they were the reason why you know, I was, say, a popular figure. You know what I mean? And how, I, how I we, cared I yeah. mean, all the way through my career from 15 on up. But how old were you when you got out of jail? I was like 37. Did you go back out and, and what was your career like when you first came out? Because it was a certain way when you went in and you came back out. Were you like skating once again? Well, right when I got out, I it's in my documentary. It shows them filming me. Him. And yeah. then it shows me getting on the board for the first time and then doing the first tricks. And Rising Sun, right? Yeah, Rising, Rising Sun. Rising Sun documentary. It's a great yep. documentary. And uh, I always look at that and I just go, remember those moments because I didn't touch a board, you know, but one time, you know, that I got uh, 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 to actually touch a board. Yeah. You know, I don't know if I could say it on the air, but uh, uh, I did touch one on the inside because somebody wanted me to sign it. Oh, you wow. You know what I mean? Somebody snuck a skateboard yeah, in there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And had me sign it. <laughs> Well, a couple people. Put other ass. Yeah, I won't. Kidding. I won't say who. But yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. I, I signed some boards, got to feel them, look at them, and it was pretty cool. But that was it for the whole five years that I was gone. And you know, when I got out, it was like the whole skateboarding community. I remember, like, I was in prison and Chili Peppers. Yeah, I wrote it down know, here. Were were, were I heard that they were gonna 
you know, wear free soy shirts on a television show, an yeah. awards thing. And I was like, what? They're actually going to do that? Yeah, yeah. And then I'm sitting there, you know, we're in prison, so we're like looking at one TV. And I'm sitting there and I'm looking at this awards. I'm like, you know what? I think this might be the awards. And I'm sitting with the homies. <laughs> and they're like, what? You know those guys? Uh, I'm like, yeah. They're like, nah, you don't know those guys. I'm like, they. I think they might be wearing free Christian Soy shirts. <laughs> they're like, what? Stupid, right? Next thing you know, they come out and I look and they're like, looked at it. They looked at me and they looked at <laughs> It oh, said shirt? free Christian and soy shirt. That's shirts. amazing, dude. Flea had it like painted on his chest. Wow. And I just remember that like going, awesome. wow, how sick is that? And they were like, dang, we're hanging out with a homie. You know what awesome. I mean? All of a sudden, I became this cool <laughs> dude in a moment. And it must uh, have felt awesome to see that. I tell you, those are things, you know, when my wife would take pictures with all these people, they'd write on the back of a photo and she'd send it to me mm-hmm. inside you know, write a note and just knew that they were like, you know, supporting me saying, Hey, Christian, you'll get through this. You know, even them wearing those shirts, you you don't even know what that did for me. You know, it made me fight for me, made me fight for not only me, but for everyone that, that I can influence in a positive way. Yeah. When I got out, I don't think you realize your impact you had on people until you get out. Well, you know, you were living in it. You were living in this crazy world. You you know, know, I knew because I knew how much influence I had on people before. Uh-huh. For all the bad things, you know what yeah, I mean, true. and I knew I knew how much power I had. I, I thrived off that power. We all do, as yeah. men, as entertainers, as you know, musicians. Yeah, you know that stage performance, and then the feedback, and then you know when people show up, and you're like, ah, oh, I was praying people would show up. Then they show up, and you're like, sick, <laughs> and then you're like, and they're cheering, oh, and then you kill it, and you're like, this is insane, and everybody mm-hmm. after goes, dude, you killed it, and you're like, whew, that was a lot of pressure. Yeah, yeah, It yeah. did it, it happened, it accomplished everything, and you yeah. go, wow, that's amazing. Yeah. And I think that, you know, we kind of live and breathe on that, but then now it's not about us anymore, it's about the people, and now what we can not just take, but yeah. what we can give. And I think that that, to me, is now the part that's, you know, gone from one level to the next level yeah. of what we're doing here on this planet. 100%. It's like, it's like before I used to just be creative, used to just break records and yeah. have the best and be the best. And, you know, that's take, 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 take almost, you know, and then now I'm just wanting to cheerlead and encourage and yeah. to build up and edify other people to believe in their dreams. And it's it's not just in, in our performance as a musician or an artist or yeah. an athlete. It's more in, in their personal life as well. Agreed. Because that seems to be a, a, a big issue now with kids that are suicidal, kids that are depressed, yeah. young kids. Yeah. These are not adults where before it it's was like so much. kids would be on Ritalin or Adderall. I was on, I was on that as a kid, You know what yeah. I mean? As kids and then they'd like you know, the, the street would kick it out of them yeah. and then they would like be, you know, they'd have to fit in. And so they'd have to like get with 100%, the program 100%. where now it's like, there's this element of entitlement. And next thing you know, the, there's nothing we can do about it. The street can't raise them cause we're, we're shielding them from the street. So they're not exposed. Yeah, and so sheltered. they can't learn on their own cause we're yeah. going to shield them. So now, you know, we have this opportunity as to what are we going to do? Are we going to, be examples to these kids and to recognize models, yeah. where they're they're having issues in their lives and to be able to tap into that so that we can steer them out of that direction yeah. and i think that that's our opportunity now as parents yeah and then our opportunity is um kind of like whether it be you know say athletes professional athletes yeah. musicians yeah you know celebrities whatever it may be i think that you know we have an opportunity now to make a difference and now it's about use our platform you know the people it's yeah. not about the money but even though we're we're talking about people now money makes that that actually you know run and 100%. perform yeah. and so now i'm trying to be a businessman i'm really looking forward to this next season of going from getting my heart right getting my yeah. faith right getting my family right yeah. to now getting to the point where i want to do creatively in business in marketing and production yeah. and, and actually touching people, utilizing all my, you know, ideas to yeah. 
become a reality. Mm -hmm. So then I could actually, you know, pay for making a difference yeah. versus, oh, I need a donation to go make a difference. No, I'm going to be the donor to make a difference. Yeah, yeah, I'd yeah. love to be a donor. Rather yeah. than be the, you know, nonprofit yeah. who seeks donors, you know, even though I want to do that as well. Yeah. See, there's nothing wrong with that, but I want to change the world we live in. I want to change people's lives. I want to see it better for our kids too. you know, our us, kids. you know, well, it's being an example to them that role wait, model. if I can help, you know, people in a poverty place to, you know, fend for themselves and educate them and do, you know, whether it's even give them clean, you know, water to drink in a state, a country like Haiti. Yeah. A well in Africa, yeah. like stuff like that. Like, why can't we make that difference if we have the power? I agree. So that's my next goal is to have power to be able to do these things and get all my friends and and people who have the power to team together to really make a difference, difference in, this, planet. Yeah, in this world we live in. Yeah. Well, I love that. I think we touched on a lot of things. Um, I just want to say one too, too also that your kids are amazing skaters too. So if that's a direction they might want to do with skating, obviously, how do you feel about that? Because they're both, they're both rippers. You know, I, I'm just supporting them and I'm encouraging them that the opportunity is there. Yeah. Like, you know, the that is something that, you know, they can take and they could go all the way. Yeah. You know, and then obviously running the legacy brand of my name, yeah. utilizing it for their own interest and to be creative in their own ways. Yeah. But I believe skateboarding would be that springboard for them because they're naturally talented 100%. already at it. And it's if they want to do it, they can do it really easily and really quickly and yeah. really soon. And they can make money at a young age. Like you. But it's up to them. I'm not sitting here saying this is what you're going to do. I yeah. go, this is your option. And if you don't want to do it, I'm okay with it. It's yeah. your choice. Yeah. You know, I have older kids that are 30 and 21 and, you know, I've, you know, supported, you know, them through whatever they want to do. They yeah. love skateboarding. They do it. But you know what I mean? They've yeah. chose different, you know, path paths of uh, what they want to do. And I love that yeah. because it's not about that. It's about doing what makes you feel good, what makes you happy. Makes you happy. Yeah. And then at the end of the day, you know, you know, to have family, friends and that relationship, you know, that I think is important now. You know, families are so broken. 100 percent. That, um, you know, I really, you know, I've got a 30 year old, 21, a 12 and a nine. And then I got three grandkids, you know, from my. 30 year old James yeah. James and then rhythm is 21 um and and for me it, it's it's like we have an opportunity to just be an example yes whether we're with them or not we're an example Agreed. and when they look because we're almost like their first idol role model everything we're yeah. their first you know um real Superhero, you know, everything. Superhero. Yeah. That's a yeah. good way to put it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like superhero, because that's what they know. And yeah. I think that you know that's where I don't want to drop the ball. I just want to be that in their lives. You know, and you do a great job. You know, and I've learned from you know how I grew up. Your pops is in your life your whole time. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah, and there's things that I've learned what to do and, and what, what not, not to do. do. Awesome. And 100%. I hope my kids learn the same. You know, there's certain yeah. things that I may not be the best at. Me too. But at least I'm getting better. If you're trying. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. if I'm like, you know, slacking, you know, and I'm hanging out with a father like you and, you know, we're talking about something and we can bounce stuff off of each other. Of course. And we go, other. ooh, that's good. I'm going to yeah. use that. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, wait, you did that? Oh, sick. I'm yeah. using that tomorrow. You know yeah. what I mean? Wait, right now. <laughs> yeah. Give each other advice. Help <laughs> and, each other. And that's why I love to have a lot of friends, a lot of, uh, you know, people who I could you know, get wisdom from, yeah. you know, a lot of accountability, you know, being, whether it's a husband too, you know what I mean? A father, a husband, yep. you know, and, and just a role model. I think that, you know, you quit learning when you quit following, I you agree. know, and for me, I just want to be a, a person that continues to soak it up, learn and get better, you know, I like every that. day. Challenge yourself, every push day. yourself. Yeah. Oh, I think my final question to you is that, I always ask people the same question. Do you consider yourself an optimistic? I can already already know you're a super positive person, but an optimistic or pessimistic person? I'm very optimistic. Yeah. Everyone would tell you because I'm I'm 
I believe, you know what I mean? Yeah, that it's yeah. possible, yeah. even when it's impossible. You believed in yourself and, from day one. Yeah, and, you know, it's almost like faith. It's invisible, you know? Like, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is like, you know, hope is in the future. Like, if I, I don't hope for what I already have. Yeah. You know what I mean? And faith, you know, makes me, when I hope for something, faith is something that, tells everyone i already have it true because i believe it and yeah. so for me that's always been my confidence in everything that i do you yeah. know what i mean when i want to achieve something i already believe it's done if i were to not think i can do it it's just not going to happen you'll never be where you are today you know, that's why pessimist is pessimist yeah that's why optimist is optimist you know what i yeah. mean and what do you want to be <laughs> It's well, true. I pick optimists, you yeah. know what I mean? Because, <laughs> you know, I, I don't I don't allow things to dictate, you know, my my um, belief system. Yeah. Because if I were, I probably would be skeptical about my faith in God and religion and yeah. Jesus Christ and the things that I, you know, put my life on. And so that. for me, you know, that optimism in just the general the practical things, mm -hmm. life experiences that I think that, you know, me and you go through on the daily. Yeah. I think it really helps you um, not get phased yeah. by what other people say or how other people live or their actions or and how people you. respond or, or just the, the culture of today, how things are like me. I, I'm not phased by that, you yeah. know, because I'm, I'm believing, like I said, this is going to be the year that, you know, I'm going to I'm going to do huge things, whether it be business, whether it be, you know, in the Christian world, in yeah. faith, in, you know, being a, a role model. Yeah. Being a father, being a husband. Yeah. I think it's going to really explode because I'm saying it. I'm yeah. believing it. That's I'm P an optimist. That's a, de <laughs> but that, that's a definition of PM. That's a definition of PMA, though. Yeah, it's believing yourself, and you've been like that since day one, since you were a kid. Like I'm gonna do this for a career, I'm, and you did it your whole entire life. I love that PMA. You know that you 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 really champion because you know you're really making people think about it. You know, it's not just oh I'm cool and no. I'm a positive person. No, there's a label. It's called PMA. Yeah. And you know what? Are you or aren't you? Yeah. Optimist. Check it out. Yeah. Check yeah. it out, bro. <laughs> it's like, let's do the check, like filter test. Yeah. Are you? And then it really causes us to go the extra mile and to be more positive because it helps me. It's contagious. PMA is something that you I've always it. had since yeah. I was a little kid because yeah. you know what? If you weren't like that, it's like you, you're not grateful, Christian. Mm -hmm. Man. You're, yeah. you're, you're like an entitled kid. What? You're spoiled. Mm -hmm. Oh, I ain't none of that. So yeah. I'm going to be PMA. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And w it was just built in us as kids in yeah. the in the 60s and 70s. You yeah. know what I mean? Like actually the 70s because I was only three when I hit 1970. Yeah. So from the 70s, it was like for me, it's just normal. The 60s, I'm a 60s baby. My parents yeah. were like peace, love, and rock and roll. I love that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Reggae and... Uh, you know, drugs really yeah, came yeah. in and yeah. I'm the product of that kind of parenting, yeah. which, you know, instilled in me this positive mental attitude. 100%. And I'm thankful for that. Yeah. You know, and I'm thankful that, you know, I've kept to that as a, you know, foundation of my attitude or my, you know, personality. Yeah. And when you say it and when you talk about it, it just affirms, you know, the things that I was always uh, convicted by 100%. my whole life. Yeah. And, and for me, I love that about you, Toby. Thank you. It's uh, something special because you're you're projecting it and everybody's feeling it and you're making a difference. Thank you. You know, it does make a difference. I mean, obviously, when you're. You're a lead singer of a punk rock band, you know <laughs> what I mean? And yeah. you love hip hop and Everything, yeah. I love hip hop. You know, I, know. I grew up in the whole hip hop stage, you know, know. Uh, funky reggae power tools days, you know, when it was just blowing up here in L.A. And and to to see that we're the ones kind of like championing positive mental attitude yeah. here and there, you know, is, is pretty ironic. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, yeah. it, it really is because we come from a radical totally. group and culture that's almost anti that. Yeah. You know, and we're seeing, well, we've tasted 
we've tried, we've tested, and now we realize what's important. It's awesome. And that's PMA. It is. And so one of the quotes from Napoleon Hill who wrote Think and Grow Rich, he's originally a PMA, is what the mind can conceive and believe it can achieve. And you're living proof of that. Well, I, I, I really believe that that's uh, something that I, I want to continue to live by the OG, and, yeah. and just um, really f- reflect that. Yeah. You know, I don't want it to be just in me. Yeah. And I just keep it to myself. Yeah. I like to reflect that. And so um, that's that's why we're hanging out. Toby. 100%. That's why we're connected. I think connected. that, you know what, <laughs> that's why we connected. I think, yeah, for you sure. know, that's the, the, the attraction. And I think it's magnetic. And uh, we're going to do a lot to change a lot of uh, the world and the world is people. Awesome. Well, I appreciate your time. I, I appreciate you being my friend. For me, growing up seeing you in magazines and becoming your friend, you were like a, a legend. It's crazy when you look up to people and you become their friends. You think that you're like this way older dude. You're only a couple years older than me. <laughs> but when I'm a little kid looking at your magazines, like, oh my God, this guy's so much older. But you're only a couple years older and we come from the same kind of world. And so I'm honored to call you my friend. I want to thank you for everything you did for skateboarding, all your inspiration to me as a kid. I showed you me in the cover of that newspaper in 1984. <laughs> When I was skating, remember me, Rusty, skating that newspaper? I loved it. That, so, that, yeah, and Rusty had, you, Rusty had your hammer headboard and shit, so it's uh, fucking uh, awesome. You know what? That made me look look <laughs> at you way different. <laughs> I was like, wait, no, you were legit. It legitimately yeah, yeah, me, yeah. yeah. you were so legit. And, and, Punk rock, <laughs> skateboarding, and uh, representing the hammerhead and, and, was uh, dope. Yo, yo, and making the hammerhead board back then was so punk. Like, just making that shape. Nobody was doing any shapes like that. So when that came out, I was like, what the fuck is this, dude? It was... <laughs> it's amazing man that yeah. was all your concept huh pretty much yeah i mean it was all built out of function you know when i thought of the hammerhead it came from the fish was and grabbing all the, that sh- the yeah. tail tap for the swallow tail yeah. the side cuts to lighten up the board Dude. and then the flat nose for body jars and lean to tails yeah. and then when i started my own company i'm like i gotta make it different i yeah. need like a grab for my backside air Perfect. so i cut a little notch right where my hand goes <laughs> and i looked at the board and i was like that looks funny and then i cut a swallow in the nose yeah and i looked at it i'm like that's a hammerhead it went from a fish to a hammerhead and it's boom amazing, dude. we just launched it and nobody out. ever could copy that board there's only one shape like that maybe people have tried but there's only one hammerhead it's pretty amazing man it's yeah no board time. no boards had any shape yet no it was just and super then boring. the next year and the year after it was like everybody started having their own shapes that identified with their own personality their own style of yeah. skateboarding and it became part of our we culture created that. yeah I, i'm one of one of the most uh, prideful <laughs> things you know so is to just be a part of that evolution yeah you, you know do what a mean? lot man i'm very proud to have uh, uh, input because you know it takes takes risk yeah. To do something new. And for me, you know, I always wanted to take a risk, whether yeah. it was wearing spandex pants. I love when you like, do that. You know what I mean? Like they were like, you're not going to do that. <laughs> I was like, oh, just because you said I won't do this, I'm doing it. Just like when I, I, love I that. wore lace pants in a contest at Capitola. They're like, you won't do that. I was like, oh, now I'm definitely doing that. it. And I love that you were fearless. You didn't give a shit what people thought about you. That's 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 the true definition a punk, of a punk punk rocker too, not giving a fuck what people thought. You wore what you wanted to wear, you do what you want to do, you created your own tricks, your own boards. It's amazing, man. <laughs> and we're still trying to live the dream today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not wearing spandex anymore. You're not. But you know what? Maybe fir- maybe <laughs> I'll like do some uh workout and my wife's trying to get me to go to yoga and work out and get abs back and maybe one day I'll put on spandex and I'll be like, Oh yeah, maybe I'll go outside. <laughs> Nah. Uh, and, and, the, and the, fi- <laughs> the, the final the, the final thing is when i met christian he had no tattoos and as of a couple years ago he's been going so hard like i gave him like a bug like he's going so hard with getting so many tats and i feel like you're gonna catch up to me before i'm dead but you've been going so hard since like 49 maybe i think you well i think what well, you're not gonna die in five years no right? you, you know what i mean Whatever, so yeah. i'm gonna pass you up in probably five years yeah maybe <laughs> Maybe five minutes. You're like, no, you won't. We're in competition right now. (laughs) Maybe five minutes, but he's been going. He went your whole life, your whole career, around all these people tied up, and he didn't get anything until like late 40s. And now if you've seen Christian ladies going so hard, getting great work done all around the world, and it's you you got the bug. Well, it's about expression. I think that, you know, art 
in expression, you know, and, and most of mine express what I, what I, what I love. Yeah. And, you know, I just got an angel, you know, on my back the other day and I got another one on my back the other day Damn. and it's above, you know, the Bible, you awesome. know, and the apostles and then the dove on my back with yeah. other angels. And to me, it, it's just, you know, another, another way to express yourself of the things you love, whether it be clothing, whether it be your totally. car, whether it be your shoes or yeah. jewelry. I think that tattoos is that, that we can like, you know, really enjoy and represent who we are. I love and it. And that's what I love about tattoos. I love it. I, yeah. I just, it's like, and I'm friends with, you know, artists, great artists. You know, my dad's an artist. Tattoo are usually were artists before tattooing, and for me, that whole culture is something I'm so attracted to because yeah, I love the people. Life. But yeah. I love the people. Yeah, I love how they they have to struggle to become great at something. And yeah. for me, knowing these people is like you know hanging out with the best you know boxer or yeah. the best you know musician, yeah. and, and hearing the stories that it took for him to get there. Yeah. That to me is the gold in life I is love to that. hear the journey story to get and when far. you hang out with people that are so creative like that it inspires you it inspires 100%. you and you still dream and you still want to want to like you know not only just resurrect old dreams but you want to dream new dreams i love and that it's inspiration for that I, I agree that hanging around people that inspire you and bring you up to the positive it helps and change your life you go the opposite way take it on a bad path and you experience both you experience hanging out with people who got you in the dark world and the brighter world, and it's amazing. You've been through so many things. You're a survivor. I'm happy you're alive. I'm happy you're healthy. I'm happy you're great. I'm happy to know you. So thank you so much for being on the podcast, Mr. Christian Asori, ladies and gentlemen. Love you, Tobe. Love you, too. God bless you. You too. Thank you. Hey, guys. Thanks for listening. Um, please rate, review, uh, subscribe. If you haven't subscribed yet to this podcast, please do that. And whatever platform you are listening to this on, I'm glad you found me. You can rate me and review me on there also. So thank you guys sincerely for the support. I cannot wait for you guys to the next one.